Hello guys. In the previous video, we looked at how to add SQLize to Next.js app router project. In this video, we'll look at how to add Prisma. Prisma is another object relational mapper or ORM. It is a bit different from SQLize. It may lack some features that SQLize has, but it seems to be a bit lighter and has better support for TypeScript. So it may be just the right choice for your particular project. I am in freshly installed Next.js app router project, so let's go ahead and add Prisma to it. We'll install Prisma as a dev dependency. Next, we're going to initialize Prisma with MySQL as a data source provider. And it gives us instructions on the next steps. So we need to create that env file. Number two is Prisma DB pool. We're not going to do that because we don't have already existing database schema. However, if you do, you can use it to generate schema from your existing uh, database schema. This is kind of nice feature that SQLize doesn't have. And in a step three, it tells us to run Prisma generate to generate Prisma client. Prisma client is generated on a Prisma schema. In effect, whenever a Prisma schema changes, you actually need to run Prisma generate. We're actually going to put Prisma generate in NPM build and start scripts to ensure we always have up-to-date schema generated. Let's go ahead and open env file that it generated for us. And as you see, it uses database URL as a string, and it's the only way it uses it. We're not going to have connection environment variables, just a string. And we're going to go ahead and paste our own environment variables. We're going to put database URL for our local database with a root secret. And uh, as usual, I have 33 061 port, but in your case, most of the time it's going to be 3306. And I called my database Next.js Prisma, and I'm also adding node environment as development and the port 3000. Let's go ahead and add uh, the env file to that git ignore. Now let's go ahead and check out Prisma folder that is got generated for us. Prisma folder, we have uh, schema.prisma. There will be also migrations in there. And as you can see, we have a generator, Prisma client JS, and our data source is MySQL, and that's where we're importing database URL. Let's go ahead and create uh, our first schema. It's going to be model user ID is integer, and at ID means this is a primary key, and at default value, it will be auto incrementing. The name is string. The preferred name is also string, but there is a question mark, so it will be optional, meaning allow null is true. And um, we also going to have a native uh, database type as a text on this field, because string type in Prisma will give you variable character type in database or MySQL. Now we're going to have created that, and it's going to be date time type, and default value will be null. And updated that is also date time, but Prisma also has the type as updated at, so Prisma will automatically uh, set the updated at for us. And then we also have at, at map. So I like to have my tables being lowercase with underscores. So uh, by default, Prisma will create table user with uppercase U, but I don't want to have that. I'm going to have it like lowercase and plural, so I'll put users. Let's go ahead and save our changes. And as you may notice, schema.prisma is not a JavaScript file. It's actually a Prisma file. So uh, in the VS Code, you may want to install the Prisma extension right here. There is a Prisma for VS Code. So this file is get nicely parsed and uh, has colors. Since we made changes to Prisma schema, now we need to go ahead and run Prisma generate. Let's go ahead and do just that. PX Prisma generate. And if you are doing it for the first time, Prisma also installs a Prisma client for us. And then it tells us to create Prisma client and creating Prisma client is as easy as Prisma new Prisma client. However, in Next.js, it's a little bit tricky because in development, the command next dev clears Node.js cache on run and this in turn initializes new Prisma client several times. And this in turn initializes new Prisma client instance each time due to hot reloading that creates connection to the database. And then 
this can quickly create a lot of connections to the database and exhaust the database connection. The solution in this case is to instantiate a single instance Prisma client and save it on a global object. So basically create a singleton for Prisma client. So let's go ahead and uh, select SRC folder and we're going to create a file called db.ts and in this file we're going to instantiate and export Prisma client. So we're going to import Prisma client at Prisma client. We're going to declare a global uh, Prisma client and then we're going to have Prisma client. Uh, we're going to put uh, global.prisma or new client if global.prisma doesn't exist. And then if we check if it's not in production and if it, there is no global.prisma, we'll assign a new Prisma client to global.prisma and then we're going to be exporting Prisma. So basically using a singleton pattern right here. Now let's go to package.json and as I mentioned before, we need to add Prisma generate to build and dev scripts. So let's do exactly just that. And we're going to add two migration scripts. We're going to have migration create where we're going to use Prisma migrate dev with a create only flag and then migrate Prisma migrate deploy. You can actually uh, migrate, you know, locally with a Prisma migrate dev, but I like to first create my migration, review it and then run it. That's why I have two separate commands. Also, there is no easy way in Prisma to revert migrations. So to revert migration, you are better off just creating another migration that reverts the previous one. So there will be no migration rollback commands here. Now let's go ahead and run migration create script. We're going to add a flag name. We're going to call create user stable and let's hit enter. And our migration got created. Let's go ahead and check it out. So Prisma puts it in Prisma folder migrations. And here we have another folder with the name of migration and the date. And if we click on that, we will have a migration.sql. So in Prisma migration is really an SQL script. You may have noticed that we didn't use the timestamp for created at and updated at. It kind of depends on your preferences. So, but if you prefer to have created at and updated it as a timestamp, so what you can do is go to Prisma schema. And when you have created at, you can put at DB as a native type, and then you can use timestamp and you can do the same thing for updated as well. Well, since our migration is created, let's go ahead and run it. I'm gonna do npm run migrate. And it's saying that it successfully created the table users. Let's go ahead and check it in the table plus. We're gonna refresh it. And as you can see, it also has migrations table. It's called underscore Prisma underscore migrations, where it records migrations the same way the SQLize does. And then we have users right here. Let's head back to the VS code and uh, create users page where we're going to be displaying users. So in the app folder, we're going to create another folder called users. And in this folder, we're going to create page.tsx. And we're going to put the following code in here. We will import Prisma from uh, the DB file that we created. We're going to have this page as dynamic. We don't want to have it static because we have dynamic data from the database to display. And the next one, we're going to have function get data. There we're going to query users using prisma.user.find many. And then we're going to return the users. Then we're going to export default function page where we're going to get data. And uh, we're going to return main div will map over users and display user name and that's it now let's go to the root of our project or root page of our project rather and we're going to go and add the link to this users page we're going to scroll down where they start the links and then right here we're going to put it as the first link right we're going to be using a link from next to link and it's going to go to the users page. And here we have some Tailwind uh, classes to kind of style the link. Let's go ahead and save our changes. And then we're going to run npm run dev. Well, 
Looks like the next application is ready. There is no data in the database. Let's go ahead uh, to Table Plus and add a couple users. So in Table Plus, let's here it tells us that updated ad doesn't have a default value. So you may want to put your default value on updated ad as now as the same thing that we did with a created ad, but normally you wouldn't put your data straight in the database. So sometimes you won't need it, but in our case, we are not able to create records without the default value in updated ad. So let's put a quick default value in here. We're just going to put right here 2024 01 01 00 00. .00, .00. The same thing in uh, the next record, 20, 24, 01, 01, 00, 00, 00. And now we can save the data. Let's go back to the browser, click on the user's link, and you can see we are displaying Alex and John right here. So if you ask me, I think Prisma integrates a little bit better with the Next.js, so it doesn't have any warnings. It makes Next.js to run a little bit faster while developing. But if you like SQLize, check out this video on how to add SQLize to Next.js uh, app router project. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.